what voyage is complete without a stowaway? And on Operation Odysseus, this voyage through time and space, little old Stefan Milo has snuck himself onto a collaboration with the biggest and best history channels on YouTube. I have no idea how. Kings and generals. I must have been really good to someone in a former life. Each of these channels is going to go into amazing detail about how man's relationship with the sea has had a profound impact on the course of human history. And it really begs the question, when did this relationship start? How long have humans been sailing? Well, that's a difficult question to answer for a couple of reasons. The first being sailing definitely predates writing by a long time. If we go back to the earliest writers, like in Mesopotamia, the first perhaps true emperor Sargon of Akkad was writing that his ports were full of wares from places like Dilmun, Magan, Maluha. So clearly written sources are not going to be much help. By the time we had writing, we had already developed international trade, ports. This is not the first time anyone's built a boat. The second problem is that until the 19th century, pretty much every boat ever was built out of either reeds, skins, or obviously wood. These last archaeologically about as long as so typically not very long. Nevertheless though, archeologically, we do have some boats that have managed to survive to the present day. Perhaps the most spectacular example is a four and a half thousand year old boat from Egypt. Pharaoh Khufu, builder of the Great Pyramid, wanted to spend his afterlife cruising in style. I can't blame the guy. So naturally he buried a boat next to the pyramid. This boat has survived in such amazing condition that it's still believed to be seaworthy. However, at 43 meters long, five meters wide, this again is obviously not the first boat anyone has ever built. But the oldest boat we have is definitely the Pes Canoe. This thing is tiny, it's just 2.9 meters long, 44 centimeters wide. It really must have been built just for one guy to potter about the swamps and marshes, but it definitely can support one guy. Incredibly, this thing is 10,000 years old from way back in the Mesolithic period before Europeans were farming, before we had worked out a way to live in one place all year round. It's really an ancient boat. Honestly, incredible that it survived to the present day. In terms of artistic representations of boats, we have some 3,000 year old rock art from Sweden, which clearly shows a boat. We have some 6,000 year old Egyptian pottery, which shows boats but probably the oldest evidence comes from Gobostan in Azerbaijan. Over there, they have what is basically an art gallery of prehistoric art. This place deserves to be much more famous than it is. There are over 6,000 carvings dated to between five and 20,000 years old. I'll just take a pause a sec. <laughs> Some of these carvings are even dated to 40,000 years ago, which is pretty in incredible and that's probably the oldest direct evidence we have of boats but realistically let's face it 40,000 years in the grand scheme of the history of homo sapiens is not that old so is there anything we can do to sort of look further back in time well obviously there is because the video isn't finished yet we can look at islands stands to reason that if humans made it to an island, we had the ability to sail there. The oldest evidence we have of Homo sapiens reaching any island is definitely Australia. Even at the height of the Ice Age, Australia was still an island, although it was connected to Papua New Guinea and formed this landmass that geologists call Sahul. At the Majed Bebe archaeological site in what is now Australia's Arnhem Land, right in Northern Australia, Archaeologists have discovered a site with 11,000 artifacts from different periods throughout the Stone Age. Majed Baby is dated conservatively to 47,000 years ago, but is much more likely to be 65,000 years old, which is an incredible age. This shows that the first explosion of humans outside of Africa had the ability to produce boats and had the ability to sail across the sea to get to Australia. It always makes me wonder because we're not talking about a different species here. These are Homo sapiens. They're humans just like us. They had a rich and full life. It always makes me wonder why did they keep exploring? Why did they sail to Australia? Were they trying to 
exploit a new opportunity? Were they trying to flee some violence? Or maybe they visited Australia regularly, perhaps on fishing trips, and one day just decided to stay. We'll never know the answer to that, but it's uh, interesting to wonder about as I lie in bed in these cold autumn nights. Now, Majed Bebe is definitely the oldest evidence we have of Homo sapiens using boats and traveling on the water. But the key word there is Homo sapiens. Back over in Europe on the island of Crete, archeologists have discovered hand tools, hand axes, things like this that are associated with our species. The only problem is they're dated to, at the oldest, 110,000 years ago. There's only one species in Europe at that time who could have made those tools. It's our old friend Homo neanderthalensis, our chubby, squat, muscly <laughs> hominid cousin. Now the intelligence of Neanderthals is always up for debate. How much art did they produce? How much language did they have? But there's growing evidence that they were capable of producing boats, not just from Crete, but from other Greek islands, maybe even the south of Spain as well. It used to be believed that Neanderthals had reached Europe and Asia traveling through what's now the Middle East. But it's entirely possible that they sailed across the Mediterranean, which would really dramatically change our understanding of Neanderthals and how clever they were. My opinion, they probably weren't that dumb, realistically. They're not that dumb. The final island I'm going to mention today is the island of Flores over in Asia. Now this island is famously home to a hominid called a Homo floresiensis. Tiny little guy, super hairy, looked more like a chimpanzee than a modern human, realistically. Homo floresiensis is believed to be a descendant of Homo erectus, the most unfortunately named of our hominid ancestors. Archaeological excavations from Flores believe that Homo erectus reached the island about 800,000 to a million years ago. How the fudge did Homo erectus get there? Did they sail? Did they float on some sort of raft? Were they swept up in a tropical storm? These are all good questions that we will likely never have an answer to. But you have to wonder if they were capable of deliberately building boats and sailing, why they never made it to Australia. There's absolutely no evidence of Homo erectus on the entire continent. Maybe we'll find some in the future, but as it stands at the minute, there's absolutely none. My personal opinion is that they were swept up in a tropical storm. I mean, a million years ago is really ancient to think that we were building boats and sailing across the sea. But nevertheless, remains hypothetically possible. For sure, we can definitely say though that creating boats and sailing and traveling across the water is as old as humanity itself and potentially much, much older. That's it for my video. Probably more people have watched this video than any one that I've ever made before. So if you've made it this far, I appreciate that. Consider subscribing. I'm going to talk a lot more about archaeology and the Stone Age and really ancient history in the future. Now to continue Operation Odysseus, I'm going to hand the baton on down through time. The other creators that are making fantastic videos on ancient history, you should definitely watch them now. Uh, Epimetheus, he's going to be talking about the Sea People and the collapse of Bronze Age civilization. We've got Archaea Historia, he's going to be talking about Greek colonization. And we've got History March, who's going to be talking about the Battle of Ecnomus. The playlist is the pinned comment, it's in the description, these videos are in the description. You would be mad not to watch them, especially if you've made it this far through my video. To all the other history channels out there, it's been a genuine honor to participate in this. Thanks very much for having me. Like, comment, subscribe, skiddly-doo. I'm gonna eat some fish and chips. See ya.